This week on Food and Art UK, we're in London. We go to Papagoni's Pizzeria to meet Julie Weir from Music for Nations and Dan from Parabellum London. You don't want to miss this. Once arriving in London, we headed straight for Papagone's Pizza in Finsbury Park. Hi Julie, Hello, and welcome George. to Food and Ice UK. Thanks for having me. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Julie Weir. She's the head of Music for Nations at Sony Music and responsible for quite a lot of your record collection, no doubt. So, Julie, um, thanks for joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how we met? I worked in a record shop in Leeds and you were the Saturday boy oh, at the it? time when you were 16 years old, mm. which is really terrifying because that's like 30 years ago, which 30 is years. terrifying, mm. absolutely terrifying. You haven't aged a day, I'm joking. You know <laughs> <laughs> I really I, like I wish. <laughs> but yeah, and, and it's funny because the music stuff has connected us for 30 years, even absolutely. when I left Leeds. Absolutely so, has, yeah. Interesting thing to do. So you left uh, Now Records and then moved down to London, right? That's correct. I left Nail because I wanted to move to London, but I got a scholarship to do a master's down there. I went I went to Nail, well, I moved to Leeds after I'd finished my bachelor's in Manchester, much to my parents' disgust, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. They were like, Julie's going to be a doctor or an accountant or something like that. I had no interest in stuff, even though I was really academic but moved to Leeds because my boyfriend at the time had moved to Leeds, of course, and I was 21. But I really loved Leeds, and I met a lot of amazing people there and I, who are still friends to this day, actually. Right. And I still credit Nail Records with a lot of my musical taste and musical discovery, and I think it's absolutely, the same for you. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It was a great foundation for anybody wanting to know about music. I suggest to any music lover, work in a record shop for a while. You get a very eclectic foundation for uh, your, your taste later on in life, I would say, definitely. And you learn a lot about, learn a lot about human psychology as well in the Absolutely, record. yes. You learn a lot about all the kind of people we used to find on Call Lane, which used to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, I, but again, Mark, who worked there, Mark Mason, big shout out to Susan, his wife. Mark was really influential on me regarding design and culture. He was absolutely brilliant. And Adam, who ran the shop as well, now runs a vintage shop in Horsforth. Horsforth, yes. World of Stuff, Horsforth. Go check it out. Big shout out to Adam and Jackie Sneeze. Yes, absolutely amazing. People. I feel like we're doing smashy and nice here. Yeah. We are That's doing really it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so after moving to London, you got involved with Gothamus Records, mm. right? That's very true. I. I re I, well, I went, I went to London to do a master's and I always knew I wanted to work in music. And it's kind of, whether I enjoyed my master's or not is pretty debatable. Yeah. And it was just like a vehicle to get me down there. And then I applied to loads of labels to see if they'd have me, <laughs> yeah. to be quite honest. And at the time I was a little bit, not as wise as I am now about the music industry and thought that a tiny label called Clawfist would have a huge staff. Mm. It was one person. Yep. And as I joined Cacophonous, it was like another one person. Mm. So it was kind of, I wanted to work at Clawfist because they were looking after people like Lydia Lunch and Gallon Drunk and loads of like left field eclectic cool. artists like that. But it was a singles label. But luckily they, they kind of <laughs> probably saw this CV from this like 21 year old Muppet and thought, this is going to be hilarious. Let's get her in. <laughs> and I remember going in for the interview sitting around the kitchen table it was at a 45 degree angle totally on the one mm. basically sitting on a spike because it was a, it was a chair that didn't really work and got through the interview and didn't leave there for like 20 odd years I don't think yeah because you got involved with uh, Cradle of Filth yep Cradle of Filth Timmy Borgia Balsagoth Gehenna loads of black metal acts yeah yeah so uh, skip forward a few years and I saw you in London again and you said you had this idea for a label called Visible Noise. It was, and I believe that was in the pub it as was. well. But, um, the Intrepid Fox, yeah. God rest her. God rest us all, yeah. Yeah, it was, and it was, it was basically because I think at that time all of the British magazines and all of the press were leaning more towards 
American artists. It was mm. like sort of new metal, kind of was just bubbling, and it was bands like Fear Factory, Machine Head, and stuff sure. like that. And I mean, we were just discussing before, actually, weren't we? I mean, I think the first two bands I worked with were a band called Primary Slave, which is a guy called David Polzer, who actually, good little factoid, used to do all the visuals for Emperor. I forgot to mention that before. Awesome. And, and then a band called Kiltivis, and Mark's gone on to be a, a music lecturer yes. as well. So everybody's moved around and done and done various things. But that basically came out of my love for British music and the fact that there's a huge, huge hot bed of talent over here. Absolutely. There was never really given the credence, the coverage, or the belief from yes. the British press. Absolutely. And I wanted to do, to do stuff around that to, to help those artists grow. So then from there we moved. We've done my Valentine and mm. Lost Profits. Obviously, we all know what happened there. And then things like Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, so like from a very, very young Bring Me the Horizon, definitely not the Bring Me the Horizon everybody knows these days. Not now. Very different kettle of fish, but you saw something in them that made you realize that they were what they were capable of. They were fearless. They were a fearless, closed gang who couldn't give a monkeys about anyone else around them. They just wanted to get their heads down and do what they wanted to do. Obviously, like sort of spearheaded by Ollie. Because I mean, obviously, he, he had dropped dead really early doors. He had dropped dead before most of the brands. I think it was only Famous that was around at the same time. Yeah. And, and Ollie is like outstripped that because it's grown from strength to strength, and because it's entrenched in culture. And, yeah. and I mean, this is what we were discussing earlier. It's like Famous was great, and I mean, that's no knocking what what they've done in the past. But Bring Me came through MySpace. They came through as the biggest band in MySpace and then moved into art, culture, film. Yeah. Literally, like, sort of having their own clubhouse, having their own bar and restaurant. And it's just like they've never, ever faltered in their steps. They've reinvented themselves with every record. And, I mean, challenges that Ollie's had aside, which, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm sure, who wouldn't mm. have challenges growing up in the public eye from when you're 18 to now? And it's it's like 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. Really, now. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, a, a good way to chart Ollie's trajectory, I think, um, is to look at his fashion brand, how it started out like t-shirts oh God, and yeah. stuff, and now it's like high fashion. Yeah. Like, uh, but high fashion is... in collaboration with huge, huge brands. Yeah. And you've really got to know what you're doing IP-wise to make that work. As well. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't knock them for ambition and but, and following through. But but looking at what where they started, it was like a, I think I first saw them at the Borderline, sadly now RIP in London. Mm. And what they headlined Reading and Leeds with Ed Sheeran. They've got their own festival in Malta. Yeah, you know they're doing huge touring. I mean their touring is it's not a gig, it's an event. Mm. Absolutely, and and the success bands like Bring Me the Horizon has led to a new generation of bands, a couple of which I know you have under your wing, British heavy music bands, one being Witch Fever. Fabulous band. And the other one being Hot Milk. Yeah. Another fabulous band. And um, so Witch Fever strike me as um, they're, they're, they're almost like the post-punk pre-goth sort of sound but brought bang up to date with punky ethics, a bit of metal in there, a bit of doom in there. And um, like the most amazing front woman. Um, how did you happen across Witch Fever? I think I'd seen quite a bit about it online and, and I went to see them with my friend Charlie actually. We, we'd been, she looks after like a number of bands and we'd been at the, the O2 that night, as in the O2 in Greenwich, the huge O2. Yeah. And they were playing around the corner so I, Charlie said, well why don't we go to this gig at the O2? Which I believe was something like the Kaiser Chiefs. I have a little bit of a soft spot, another Leeds band, yeah. there you go. We've been to see them. And then we had to get a car from the O2 to where which people were playing because it was like kind of a studio squat venue. Yeah. And it was literally the last time they were seen. It was like Crime Watch. To wow. <laughs> and literally, if we hadn't been in the car, we would never have found it and never been seen again anyway. Right. And there was probably about 70 people there in this tiny like archway that was basically, it was a studio and like a little bar. It's like a rehearsal room mm -hmm. kind of thing. I saw them there and I mean, I was sold then. Because they were so, I mean, bless them, they'd even come down on the Megabus and were getting the Megabus back. Right. Well done it. But not with a load of equipment. No. Hard part. But, but they played their hearts out. They were absolutely fantastic. Amy was as fierce as hell, even though it was a small crowd. But every single member of the band had their own personality then. Mm. And that was about three and a half years ago, wow. I'd imagine. So right. things have been working for quite some time. And I mean, the album's out in October. 
Absolutely. So, and the two are a counterback as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, they've done a song together as well, yeah. haven't they? They uh, have indeed, yeah. Amy's collaborated on it. Yes, uh, yeah, I was listening to that the other day. It's a killer song. Go check it out, Counterbats and Witch Fever. It's called, I forget. I completely forgot the name of the song as well. We're Counter not that Counterbats Counter Counter and Witch Fever. Could just go to Spotify, yeah. check it. Um, but, but I think that the one thing I said was, if ever I was going to be in a band that I'd signed, it would always be Witch Fever. Absolutely, I can see you it's in that my, it, it's, it's me living my kind of alternative teenage goth fierce yeah. like sort of proud angry moments i think and I, I think they're brilliant i think the messaging's exceptional i think they're very powerful i think they've got the world in the palm of their hands and they're incredibly incredibly fierce and they are fierce really fierce uh, they just kind of remind me so much of like young susie sue sometimes yeah. you know um yeah just it's, it's exciting to see that happening for a whole new generation now who weren't around when, you know, the original, like Susie Sue and all that were out. Now we've got our own version for this generation. It's very, very exciting indeed. That's nearly 40 years on though. That's the worrying part. That, it used to be a 25 year cycle. Now it's much longer cycle. Yeah, absolutely. And so if that's the Susie Sue, you've got a Joan Jett as well Ooh. in Hot Milk. Hannah's new hair is wonderful. I do love that. I like it's. I, I think it's like John Jett meets Chrissy Hines. Definitely got that. Definitely got that. And, and and again, they're a completely wonderful pairing as well because Hannah is the the creative overthinker that's very into all of the aesthetic, and Jim is into like sort of the live aesthetic and the writing in the studio. So they're a perfect yin yang pairing as well. Yeah, I, I first uh, came across them when I was actually on YouTube one morning doing all the American chat shows as I do and um, popped up on Jimmy Kimmel which was quite the coup. Oh yeah, I mean honestly that was unbelievable I mean we still get people in the Sony building now going how on earth did you do that and as much as I would like to take the credit we cannot because they have a powerhouse of a management company behind them. Gus Brandt is one of the, the people and Jake from Cardiff Giant. Gus also looks after the Foo Fighters and Jake comes from like sort of the royalty of Fueled by Ramen so they really know what they're doing. And we, we have a, a, a UK person over here, Anna, who's also an amazing PR person on top of everything else. But Gus has a great deal of respect and and wonderful, wonderful people around. So awesome. he managed to secure that. But we're very lucky awesome. that the they're very forward thinking on their life front as well so we'd, yeah. we'd secured visas quite some time ahead of that not that we knew that was going to happen yeah they were going over there for some shows anywhere but luckily the visas had been sorted literally about a week to 10 days before that right so we were able to do it because gone are the days now that you can just phone up and get a visa in a couple of well oh, a couple cool. of days or a yeah, week definitely and normally visas take about six to eight months now absolutely I, I, I remember when 601 played in russia that took a lot of doing <laughs> yeah. in russia Ooh, yeah yes uh, different time Ouch. Right. <laughs> um yeah so here we are in Papagones. It's all going off around us. Yeah, my, my local, uh, my post-COVID office, this particular table. This is table number seven. Matt James will know all about this. Julie's local. And uh, what's so special about this place? Papagones, I moved into my flat, which is literally over the road, the same day that this place opened. And I needed a ladder, I needed a pan, I needed everything. I moved out of a rented flat into a place I bought and I was so underprepared <laughs> and they really helped me. And Marco, who, who was just left actually, was really brilliant with me and we've been friends ever since and that's over 20 years now. But I've been coming here a couple of times a week for 20 years so it says a lot. And we've just had some of the food that I can guarantee it's amazing. I've taken some shots, it should be running around about now. <laughs> um, but the food is, it's really good home-cooked family Italian. It's affordable, it's really tasty, it's very simple, and you could eat anything off the menu and it would be delicious. Because people always say, what should I have? And I'm like, anything. It's so, great. So you can find Papagones, Finsbury Park, Straub, um, right here. Yeah, Straub Green Road, N4, 3PX. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, we were joined by Dan from Parabellum London. And hi, welcome back to Food and Arty, and I'm sat here with the man behind Parabellum Jewelry. Hello. 
Your name is? Dan. Nice to meet you. Dan. And um, you're um, making quite a name of yourself, being a jeweller to uh, what royalty? I, I guess so, which is which is very cool. Um, I'm like the most overly self-critical person you'll ever meet, so you'll never hear that come out of my mouth, but that's very kind of you, my friend. Well, you bundle this talk to yourself. <laughs> so uh, you've just recently done the collaboration with the Nova Twins, I believe. I have, I have. Yeah, was that uh, was a 10-piece set? Or? It was 11 uh, Supernova pendants to one for each song on the, the record. Um, very cool, I think they all sold out, which is incredible. That's all we can ever hope for. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. And um, what another piece that I've seen it caught my eye and might catch the eye of all the chefs out there is an amazing meat cleaver pendant, <laughs> which I really, really fancy. Actually, I fancy getting one, so that's cool. So, um, yes, yeah, so what's, you, what's your plans for the ne next uh, 12 months or so? A lot of it I can't say. Oh, <laughs> a lot of it is all shrouded in secrecy. Um, I think the main thing for me personally is my lovely partner and I are moving into a new house, mm -hmm. um, which will mean a new workshop space. Because I, I currently work in uh, a garage at the moment where if you look up, it's honestly the cast of Bugs Life up there is unbelievable. The amount of spiders that I have running around is crazy. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing glamorous about what I do at the moment. Sure. Um, so yeah, moving into a new house, have a nice new workshop. Uh, that's very, very exciting, and there are a lot of cool collaborations coming, which I can't actually talk about. <laughs> right, fair. We'll, we'll catch you up. Um, as for your socials, where can we, we find your uh, work? Uh, on Instagram, on Instagram, it'll be at Parabellum L D N. That's P A R A B E L L U M L D N. It's an absolute nightmare to say. As I picked <laughs> the name last, no, 2019, actually, I started Parabellum. When I picked the name, uh, my girlfriend and I went to go and watch John Wick Three. Oh, and then right. Ian McShane said the line in Latin, and I tapped her and was like, "That's a good band name, write that down." And then she was like, "That's a good jewelry brand name." That's like, awesome, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> I, I really like that film as well. It's, it's a very good film. <laughs> it's a very good film. film. Right, so check out on the uh, Instagram, and uh, it's your direct message you for if you want to order anything. Don't yeah, you? I am. Um, I still don't have a website. <laughs> Uh, one is being built at the moment. Um, yeah, I, I, say I can't believe I've got as far as I have without a website. But yeah, a website yeah. is on the way, I promise. <laughs> yeah, fair play. <laughs> awesome. So if you uh, check out the Instagram, see anything you like, DM down there and uh, get it shipped out. Hell yeah. <laughs>